Hello, I'm Scott Brady with Overland Journal and Expedition Portal, and I'm here in the National Forest with one of the trailers that we have been so excited to test, and that is the Explore RV X145. So this is a 14 and a half foot long box on a 21 foot trailer. This is designed for true overland and off-road use. What makes it so? It's this robust chassis, it's the Cruise Master air adjustable suspension system, 32 inch diameter tires, and skid plating throughout. So why is this trailer so important and why are we so excited to test it? It's because this Explorer 14.5 is the perfect confluence of capability, comfort, and size. You really don't find that in a lot of other trailers. They're either too big and they can't really go off-road, or they're too small and they're really not that comfortable. Why not just carry your camping gear in your vehicle alone? That's why we're so interested in testing this unit. It really is designed for off-road use and long-term overland use, has lots of water capacity on board, and all of those comfort features that we really need to spend weeks in the backcountry. Wow, it is nice and cozy in here. Although the weather outside in Prescott right now is frightful, inside of this Explorer trailer, it is delightful. That's because we've got the heater set to the mid 60s, we've got a big open space and airy cabin to spend time in. So let's talk about some of the attributes of living inside of this 14 and a half foot trailer. We'll start with what I'm sitting on, which is a double bed. And underneath that double bed, they have three 360 amp hour lithium ion batteries. So you've got over a thousand total amp hours on board, which will run just about anything that you can imagine, including charging an EV for a few miles as well. Right now we're testing the Rivian R1S, which is an amazing EV SUV, super capable, and it's also capable of towing this 5,000 pound Expedition Overland trailer. So we're gonna see if we can charge the Rivian from this trailer. So the first thing we need to do is plug in the Rivian supplied charge unit. Now it has two different dongles. They come off quite easily. One of them is for 220 and the other one is for 110. So we're gonna plug in the 110 service right now, right into the back of the trailer. It's gonna show a couple lights and then it's gonna go white and flash, which means it's ready to plug into the vehicle. So let's see how this works. All right, so then the next thing we need to do is open up the charge door on the Rivian, which is always very dramatic. And we're gonna take the Rivian. This is a J series electrical charger. We're gonna plug it into the vehicle. And in a second here, we should actually see this turn green. Look at that, we're actually charging the Rivian from the trailer. And then next to it, we've got a 2000 watt inverter that will run the induction cooktop. It provides charging for cameras and other accessories, laptops, when you're working inside of the camper. And then it's also got a 30 amp hour charger as well. So this charger is really important when you have it plugged in while at home or to shore power when you're camping at a campground. There's a couple other things that I really like about this bed configuration. Because it's an east-west configuration, it really tucks the bed tight up against this forward wall, which gives a lot more interior space. When you're sitting in bed at night, you can actually slide down the privacy screen on the window, and it's got this big projection area. I think I'm going to get myself a little projector so you can watch movies in the evening. There's a lot of storage up top. I've just got some books stored up there for now. Um, and then you kind of go into the more open area of the trailer. The table will actually rotate a little bit and it provides more than enough room for two people to move around inside of the camper. So just opposite of the galley, we have the dinette. So we've got an L-style dinette with really comfortable leather cushions and we have a very sturdy, moderately sized table, which is more than enough for two adults and even a child to sit here and eat. It's also easy to adjust. You can you can turn the you can turn the table if you're sitting here working on a laptop, or you can actually swing it out of the way if you want to make a little bit more room getting in and out of the trailer. Um, very sturdy design overall. It's very 
robust, which is unusual for trailers. Oftentimes dinette tables are just uh, really weakly supported. Underneath this dinette, we got lots more storage. Uh, there's storage under all of the seats. There's no, it's not occupied by any of the other systems. <clears throat> there's a large entry door that has its own privacy screen as well. And then we have a small galley. This galley I actually really like. I don't like the trailers that have these really long hallway style or aisle style, galley style configurations where there's just this very long and narrow hallway. I think people like them because they can fit more amenities in there, but reality is living in a trailer or living in a camper, you want this big open space. On this side of the galley, we have two 110 volt outlets. We've got a couple USB outlets as well. And then we've got a large and deep stainless steel sink. So you can easily do your dishes at the end of the day, washing all kinds of things that you may have when you're out camping and recreating in the outdoors. And then we've got basically a faucet that you would see in your home, stainless steel as well. We've got a large galley window. We have a large overhead cabinet for additional storage as well. We always wanna be careful putting heavy items in overhead cabinets on an off-road trailer because if that latch was to fail, you'd end up with a lot of destruction. Next to the sink, we have an induction cooktop. So this runs on electricity only, and because we have so much electricity on board, it's just not a big deal to run an induction cooktop, even for a complex or long cook time for a meal. Next to that, we have our gauges for the trailer, so we can turn on and off the water pump. We can turn on and off the fresh water heater. So that's why this trailer is rated, believe it or not, to minus 40 degrees Fahrenheit, which incidentally happens to also be minus 40 degrees Celsius. That's the point where they intersect. And the reason why they're able to build a trailer like this, rated to that kind of temperature, is because they started off, Imperial, the manufacturer, started off making ice fishing trailers. So they would tow their trailer out on the ice, it lowers down onto the ice, and it's good for unimaginable condition. Really good experience with insulation and insulating systems within trailers. So the water tank itself is fully insulated with inside the box of the trailer and it has its own heater on board as well if it needs to to keep from freezing and that also keeps all of the plumbing inside the trailer as well. We can also check our freshwater tank storage volume which is 60 gallons. And then it also has a 60 gallon gray water tank, which is located at the aft of the trailer alongside the frame rail. So that actually is outside and that can freeze, but not if you turn on the heater. So it's actually got a heater built into it that keeps it from freezing even in extremely cold temperatures. And then just to the left of the galley, we have our isotherm fridge. This is actually a moderately sized fridge. I actually find that it's much like they call Parkinson's theory, which is that a bureaucracy, or in the case of overlanding a fridge, will always be filled up to the available volume. So if you have a large fridge, you're gonna fill it full of stuff. If you have a moderately sized fridge like this, you're gonna fill it full of stuff and it's gonna be just fine. In the camping that I've done with this trailer, the fridge is more than adequate and you can make ice, which is one of the things we always want a fridge to be able to do. Below the fridge is where our Truma Combi unit is. The Truma Combi unit is one of the most innovative new products to come into the overlanding space because it not only heats water for showers and for doing dishes and for getting hot water into the camper, but it also heats the camper itself. So it's the air heater and the water heater all combined into one unit and easily accessible on the control unit above the door. So up on top of the fridge, we have the wardrobe. That's where we would store a lot of our personal clothing and effects that we want to have easy access to. And on the ceiling, we have something very unique to an off-road trailer, which is a Dometic air conditioning unit. Because we have so much battery power on board, we can actually run a 6800 BTU AC unit off of battery power alone. And one of the things that I like most about this trailer, and I think it actually makes it worth towing a trailer at all, is the fact that we have a full bathroom. So this is what's called a dry bath, which means that the shower is separate from the toilet. The toilet doesn't get wet. The toilet is not inside the shower, as you'll find in many trailers. So because of that, this is a very comfortable bathroom and a bathroom that you want to use because it's so easy to use. So even at six foot one, I can just stand up 
in the shower, my head actually goes up into where the vent space is. So if you're much taller than that, you may want to make sure that it, it works for you. Um, I think it's probably about 6'3 would be about the max inside the shower. We have a teak floor in there. There's actually a bench to sit down on uh, if you needed to do some, uh, spend some additional time in the shower like doing laundry for example. On the other side of the bath is the toilet, which is very clever. It, it is really interesting how it works. It uses a combination of air and vacuum to pull the sides of the bag out. Um, you do your business and then it wraps that all up into its own tidy little container and then it uses vacuum again to pull the material against the sides creating a fresh and available space uh, for the next person to do their business and I'm not sure exactly how many you get out of that but uh, I'm sure it's into the dozens of uses before you have to swap it out and then you just throw that whole module away in the trash. The other thing that I like about this is it's got a large sink, it's also got a large mirror as well, and tons of storage in the bathroom. So I'm able to keep most of my personal effects in the bathroom alone. I don't need to store much of it, even my clothing, other areas inside the trailer. All right, on the outside of the X145, we've got a bunch of features as well. So you can see that this is the entry ladder that you use to get up into the vehicle and it's actually one of the few complaints that I have around the trailer. It needs to be more easily adjustable because we camp in uneven terrain and in this particular case we had to adjust the ladder down quite a bit whereas on a flat campsite we need to adjust it up to a shorter length. Moving a little bit further aft we have heavy duty Fender flares, these are actually made out of metal, welded, so they can actually rub up against trees and other obstacles. We have a 265-75 R16 tire, so just over 32 inches tall, and it is in a mild mud terrain pattern, and it's a heavy-duty Maxxis tire, which is a good place to start. You really don't need mud tires on trailers. It's always funny to me when I see them fitted. It's probably just for looks, because it actually hinders you in a bunch of different ways, mostly around rolling resistance and fuel consumption. But this is a very moderate, um, kind of a hybrid all-terrain. Coming a little bit further back, you can see how well protected the aft of the trailer is on the departure angle. You've also got some heavy duty jacks as well on all four corners that allow you to stabilize the trailer while in camp. Up top here we have an Overland Vehicle Systems awning, so this is going to be a large area awning that will give a lot of coverage on the side of the trailer for midday sun. Okay, here in the back we have a large storage cabinet. On the inside of this you could easily put a small generator, some fuel cans or additional water cans if you needed. You could also strap additional water cans to the top. You want to be a little bit careful about not overloading this, but this is some important storage. Um, you know, you can even put a bunch of firewood in the back there as well. We also have a 110 volt outlet, so you can use that for powering items in camp or for charging an EV bike that you may have on an aft bike rack. We have a full size spare tire. And then underneath we actually have a high lift jack which could be used for lifting the trailer to do a tire change. You can also use it uh, for the vehicle. So on the port side of the trailer, we've got the Truma Combi Unit exhaust where all of that uh, propane exhaust comes out. We've also got a couple tank vents. And then this is a really important little access door here where we've got all of these really critical systems, including our Cruise Master suspension system, this is where we can do all the adjustments to the suspension. If the electronic unit was to fail for some reason, we can also manually adjust the amount of pressure that's in the bags. So you've always got that fail safe. You also have a line out for airing up tires in the trailer or on the vehicle. You also see the pressure in the two bags represented on this gauge. <clears throat> right now, we actually have the trailer mostly leveled just because of the variability in the suspension height. 
So this is a premium suspension system. This is one of the best suspension systems on the market. It's designed and tested and survives the Australian Outback. So it allows for a lot of adjustability. So think about being off-road on a really cambered section, or maybe the trailer ends up in a really cambered position because of where the tow vehicle had to be. You can actually air down one side completely and air up the other side completely to level the trailer to make it more stable through an obstacle. <clears throat> it does have a remote control. So <clears throat> this is the second remote control. It actually has two of them in the vehicle, and you can see how quickly the trailer moves. And the Cruise Master suspension system also comes with two remotes. I leave one on the keychain that I've got in the vehicle so I can actually roll down the window and hold the remote out the window and adjust the level of the trailer, the height of the trailer going over obstacles. I can lower it down to go highway speeds. So there's a lot of adjustability in the suspension. I think it's really important to have in a premium trailer like this. <clears throat> Just forward of that, we have the Nautilus RV water control panel. So this allows us to use an outside shower it also allows us to go into dry camping mode, which is the mode that we're in now. So it's just gonna draw from the tanks in the trailer and it's gonna use the, the pressure pump to provide water to the outlets. <clears throat> but you can also go into city inlet fill. So this is the city water inlet. You can just screw a hose right in there and you can fill up the tanks or you can go into city water only, which means if you're in an RV campground and you wanna leave your tanks as they are, and just operate off of city pressure, you can do that as well. You can also go into a winterized mode or even a sanitized mode as well, all by how you adjust these different levers here. And then you can see the outside shower, which is a great way to hose off your dog at the end of a muddy run, your, your mountain bike, etc. You can actually hose off a bunch of different things that we use in the outdoors. Okay, just forward, we have a GoPower solar panel inlet. So if you were for some reason to have problems with your panels or you needed more than a thousand watts, you can actually plug in additional panels here. This is also going to be your 30 amp city connection. So this provides a lot of power for charging those big batteries quickly when you need to at the end of a trip. On the front of the trailer, we actually have a huge storage compartment. And it's got these Moly panels as well. It actually has a premium one-up mountain bike rack on top as well. And then these cabinets is where you would keep your tire filling hose. You can have some additional water and jerry cans up there. For lifting the trailer or moving the trailer around separate from the vehicle, we have an ARK tongue jack. So this has got two wheels on it. Uh, which gives for a lot more dispersion of the weight so you can actually move it around a little bit even off highway makes it a lot more easy to move and it swings completely up and out of the way for ground clearance we've also got a large storage area here where you could even mount an electric bicycle or potentially even a motorcycle depending on the clearance to the vehicle and then we have another large storage compartment that actually houses the ladder but you've got room for other things in there as well and then you can see a couple steps to get us access up onto the roof for cleaning those solar panels. You can see a little bit higher up, we've got another rack installed that can take up to four max tracks, which is always a good idea to bring along when you're towing a trailer. Towing a trailer is more difficult off-road on the vehicle than without, so, you wanna, so there's times that you need additional traction. This through storage can be accessed from either side of the trailer you can easily put camp chairs, firewood, a bunch of other accessories. There's actually a ton of storage in here that you can use for life on the road. And then the last cabinet we've got here, we have two 20 pound propane tanks. So lots of capacity for extended stays in the backcountry. Uh, you do wanna keep these things topped off because you're reliant on them for heat inside the camper. 
and for also creating hot water as well. At the front of the trailer we have a very robust frame member that triangulates together and connects up to this cruise master hitch. These cruise master hitches slide on top of a pin and allow for extreme articulation off-road. So it can move through the full range of what you would need in an off-road environment. And then you have an emergency brake that you can apply if the trailer is separate from the vehicle. So what are my conclusions on this trailer? I have to say that this is one of the best trailers I have ever used for overland travel. And it really comes back to the fact that it is that confluence of capability and technical terrain over long distances of corrugation. And then you also have lots of comfort at the end of the day. But it's all packaged in just the right size. So it can fit on most trails. It can be towed by most vehicles. In fact, we're towing it with a Rivian R1S today. No problem. This thing comes in at just about 5,000 pounds, loaded up with the gear that I've got right now. 21 feet long, so it's just the right size and also less than 10 feet tall. And when you drop that air suspension, you can even get it a little bit lower. So what are the things that I really, really like about it? For me, it is that dry bath. So you end up with being able to take a hot shower at the end of a long day. Let's say that you like doing a lot of other outdoor activities like mountain climbing and mountain biking, uh, canyoneering or whatever that may be. You can take a warm shower at the end of the day. It also has a totally separate toilet. For people who don't understand how toilets work, it's really important for us to have toilets in the backcountry. Even if we're not using a trailer, we need to be minimizing our impact in these environments by carrying out all of our stuff, including that. Uh, and this one has a comfortable toilet. It really works well. It wraps everything up. It's easy to throw it into the trash at the end of the trip. And then the other thing that I like about it is the quality of the materials, the quality of all of the componentry and the materials. One of the big challenges that we find with RVs is that they use sub-rate quality components. They're just designed for a couple nights of camping a year. In fact, it's interesting, but most campers and trailers are only used for a couple weekends a year, if that. This one I'm sure people are going to be living out of, and because of that, the component quality is all very high. So we have isotherm fridge, we have a Truma Combi unit, we have heavy duty components throughout, including 360 hour lithium ion batteries. It's got three of those. So it's got all of the things that we need from a quality perspective to be able to spend weeks or months in the backcountry. All right, so the negatives I find on this trailer are actually quite few. Most of it's kind of centers around the ladder, the entry exit ladder. It needs some better adjustability, easier adjustability. Um, it could also be a little more compact, a little bit more secure when it attaches to the side of the trailer. That's one of the things that I noticed. I also noticed that I'm getting some some venting of the water tank that comes out on extreme side slopes. I think that it could be the hose could be run a little bit different uh, to kind of come up into a loop to prevent draining some of that fresh water that we have when we're at extreme side slopes. But overall, this trailer is amazing, and I cannot wait to take it out camping again.